12 Weird Facts About the History of Halloween Around the World The history of Halloween seems to invite misinformation. The entire holiday is fraught with it. Just like the mask children wear every October 31st, Halloween itself has worn many different faces in its enchanting... Urban legends breathlessly suggest that children are in danger of being given apples full of razor blades, that there is a vile Satanist lurking behind every mailbox, and that all unfamiliar looking candy is actually ecstasy, apparently handed out by some poor soul overburdened with too much MDMA lying around. In reality, of course, there is essentially no such thing as tainted candy, and you are roughly as likely to be the victim of human sacrifice as you are to be slain by a meteorite. Halloween in history is just as murky. It has a few separate origin points that all tie together. and its celebration often cobbles together local customs from pre-existing holidays. It definitely owes something to the Celtic festival of Samhain, but it's hard to say with certainty what customs come from where. A lot of the only written records come from the Romans, who considered every non-Roman a wild-eyed barbarian maniac. We can at least be sure that the early Halloween was not, Ash has been suggested, a holiday when druids would show up at your house and kill your sheep unless you gave them money. Welcome to DLP Weird. We owe the Irish and Scots for having a recognizable Halloween in America at all. The Protestant colonies were not exactly receptive to the idea of Halloween. The Puritans were so strict that the people of Boston actually banned the celebration of Christmas in the mid-17th century considering it blasphemous to observe a day with the vaguest of pagan origins. Obviously, a holiday that was based on spooky ghosts and divination rituals did not stand a chance. ...and plunge into the living nightmares of America's scariest Halloween attractions. Prepare to meet your news. <laughs> Parts of colonial America did have festivities, but they weren't widespread, and most Americans viewed Halloween as strange and foreign. Later immigrants, especially Irish immigrants fleeing the potato famine in the mid-19th century, brought over customs that were absent in the States and helped universalize a holiday that might otherwise never have truly caught on. At one time, Halloween just involved blowing stuff up. There are no references to the practice of trick or treating as we currently recognize it in the United States before the 1930s. Instead, early accounts in America mostly focus on the mischief, which ranged from harmless to dangerous. Knocking over outhouses was popular. Especially notable was the Halloween of 1913 in Sheffield, Alabama, when neighborhood wow. kids planned to fill the town cannon with gunpowder and detonate it in the middle of the night. Happy Halloween! Thank you back. Thank you back. The kids were, unsurprisingly, not experts at measuring out gunpowder, and they instead set off an explosion so loud that townspeople assumed they were experiencing an earthquake. The cannon itself was thrown hundreds of feet from its foundation, and all of the windows on the hotel facing it shattered. Jack-o'-lanterns were originally carved from turnips. The first jack-o'-lanterns were fashioned from turnips and potatoes to ward off stingy jack. Nearly two-thirds of Americans plan on celebrating Halloween this year. Ellen Davis, the Federation spokesperson... A legendary figure who was so insufferable that he was barred from entering heaven, but who had previously tricked the devil into guaranteeing that he wouldn't go to hell either. In any case, Jack wound up with nowhere to go, doomed to wander the earth, lighting his way with a burning ember inside a hollowed-out turnip, hence Jack of the Lantern. Jack-o'-lanterns in other regions were made from apples, squashes, and even cucumbers. Similarly, Germany has Rubengeister, root vegetable ghosts, carved from potatoes or beets. Halloween is ideal for spelling your future husband's name with apples. Halloween and its predecessor holidays have always been considered ideal for fortune-telling and divination. 
On Halloween, Chris Thompson's fellow pagans summon ancient deities to their Samhain celebration, a night for invoking... Samhain was, after all, a time when the veil between the worlds of the living and the dead was at its thinnest. Naturally, the best application of this access to the realm of the dead was to ask the ghosts which boy you would marry. A woman would pair an apple, throw the skin over her shoulder, and its resulting shape would indicate the initial of her future husband's name. Or, she could approach the first man she saw on All Souls Day, and that guy's name would resemble her future husband's. Alternatively, she could just walk around at church three times and make a wish. The Irish also made Barmbrack. Bread that had a bunch of junk baked into it and indicated your future based on what your slice contained. World WAR2 cancelled Halloween. The holiday ran into a bit of a rough patch in the late 1930s and early 1940s. In 1938, on October 30th, Orson Welles famously read a radio adaptation of The War of the Worlds on the air, and thereby convinced millions of people that they were under attack by Martians. A few years later, once America was fully involved in World War II, some Halloween celebrations were cancelled entirely. Chicago's city council voted to cancel Halloween for the duration of the war in 1942, not only because of all of the mischief associated with the holiday, but also due to sugar rationing. Anoka, Minnesota was home to the first citywide Halloween celebration, a city of 20,000 in southern Minnesota. Anoka is the first American to distract roving youths from Halloween mischief with an organized celebration. A citywide parade was first organized in 1920, at which time Halloween wasn't quite as organized as it is today. The event grew to include fireworks races, pillow fights, and other festivities and hosted 20,000 spectators, greater than the population of the town in the 1930s. These days, the parade attracts double that number and lasts two hours. Halloween integrates existing customs, from hiding knives to eating skeleton candy. Germans take care throughout All Souls Week to hide their knives from ghosts. In Eastern Europe, All Souls Day involves leaving doors open and empty chairs by the hearth for the ghosts of one's ancestors. Mexico celebrates Dia de los Muertos, a fusion of a pre-Columbian Aztec festival honoring the goddess Mictacusahuetl and Catholic beliefs brought by the conquistadors. So we got these candies to give away to people. So basically we're going to be trading this stuff. Or some up Dia de los Muertos presupposes that the dead would be honored more by revelry than by grief, and focuses on feasting, drinking, and celebration. It is also one of the only situations in which you will see a procession of cheerful, upper-class lady skeletons. Shakespeare mocks trick-or-treaters and the two gentlemen of Verona. Well, more accurately, he mocks the early predecessors to trick-or-treaters. In the two gentlemen of Verona, Valentine's servant Speed teases him for his lovesickness, saying that Valentine has started to sigh like a schoolboy, to watch, like one that fears robbing. To speak pooling, like a beggar at Halimus, the comparison to a whiny Halimus beggar is a reference to the medieval custom of selling, which involved traveling door to door on All Hallows Eve and singing for the owner of the house or praying for his family. The compensation for the beggar's prayers was supposed to be a soul cake. A cake topped with a cross design and sweetened with molasses, nutmeg, raisins, or cinnamon. The tradition still exists in Portugal as Pap Porteus, when children go door to door reciting rhymes in return for bread or sweets. We owe some Halloween symbology to mosquitoes, perhaps. Most Halloween symbols have a pretty clear origin. Black cats, for example, were thought to be witches' familiars, or even shapeshifted witches themselves, going back to the Middle Ages. Spiders are so innately threatening that even babies who don't properly understand what they are can recognize their shapes. Bats, on the other hand, and their association with Halloween, 
are a bit of a mystery. One theory is that Samhain, a festival that involved lots of bonfires, probably attracted a lot of flying insects, which in turn attracted hungry bats. It's also possible that there's no logical progression to the image at all, and that October just happens to be a month when there are bats everywhere. Witches are associated with Halloween because of a massive execution. The friction between Christianity and pagan traditions has influenced Halloween since the beginning, but one event helped link Halloween and witches specifically. And all that you know. Double, double toil. In 1589, King James VI sailed across the North Atlantic to retrieve his queen, Anne of Denmark. On the way back to Scotland, the king's ship faced storms so turbulent that it was forced to turn back. Naturally, everyone concluded that the storms were caused by witches. More specifically, they concluded that the devil himself had appeared in North Berwick on Halloween, 1590. and instructed a bunch of witches to fling cats in the water until a storm killed the king. This ingenious plan is only attested by the confessions of the dozens of people, who tortured until they admitted colluding with the devil in the North Berwick church. In the end, over a hundred people were arrested. Halloween was once overseen by a Lord of Misrule. Also known as the Abbot of Unreason in Scotland, the Lord of Misrule was appointed on All Hallows Eve for the upcoming Christmas season. Again reflecting a time of year when everything was upside down and backwards. He was essentially an official jester in charge of overseeing celebrations and being ridiculous. This whole commoner as king concept goes back to the Roman Saturnalia, a holiday that flipped the script on all the usual social mores. Saturnalia shares similarities with Babylonian mock king celebrations. Although these were not quite as fun, the fake king got to live as royalty for five days and was then scourged and executed. The oldest Halloween traditions involved cross-dressing. Dressing up as something else has remained central to Halloween since its inception. has worn many different faces in its enchanting 3,000-year history. The Halloween we know today all start... The Celts blackened their faces and wore animal skins as costumes. In some cases, they would carry a horse's skull or a wooden horse head with working mechanical jaws, on a pole, keeping with the general Samhain theme of inversion and disorder. The usual social order was inverted, men could disrespect their elders, and gender norms could be ignored. The most obvious reflection of this was dressing up as the opposite sex. In Wales specifically, young men dressed in women's clothes and were referred to as Guratrid. Let's show us your feeling about this video and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for your watching.